Hi, I'm Larry Johnson, Divas Align coach at Penn State University. It's certainly a pleasure to present this tape to you guys. Uh, over the past few years, Coach has asked me to do a drill tape, and this is a great avenue for us to be able to give you a drill tape and show you exactly what our players do in practice. So our drill tape you receive in the next 30, 35 minutes will be some of the drills that we do and teach our players at Penn State University. I hope you enjoy this tape. Our first part of our drill is we're going to talk about stance and starts and redirect. Uh, you'll see uh, several players getting different types of stance, right and left-handed stance, and we'll try to walk you through that as we do it in teaching at Penn State University. It's important in our first part of our stance to make sure we're in a very comfortable stance. We're going to make sure our toes underneath our armpits. We're going to make sure our hands are tripart in our fingers. Our free hand is going to be down in front of our face, just below the nose, to make sure we can strike in a very uh, forceful, forceful position. Our hips going to be a little higher than our, our hat, just so we have a great hip snap. Our toes going to be pointed up feel, and we're going to have some air underneath our flat foot, which is our near foot to our hand, and also going to have some air underneath our back foot. We're going to be heel to toe relationship. We don't want to be any wider than that. Any wider than that uh, is going to really take away from our takeoff. And we want to be great guys taking off. So we're going to make sure we're somewhat in a sprinter stance when we take off. As you can notice, you can see his hips are very high. His toes are up. We got some space underneath the toes for takeoff. His free hand is in a great position here. Uh, and this is how we want to look in our basic stance here. You can see it is in his left-handed stance. It should be the same position. Again, in the left-handed stance, you can see his toes are pointed straight up. Uh, and he's in a pretty good stance. And this is what we're looking for in our players, to make sure they have a great stance here. Uh, and when you're talking and teaching kids, it's so important to have a great stance as a base. Uh, and this is the base of what we do. This is the first part of our teaching progression. As you see, Michael now trying to get into the left and right-handed stance in a very comfortable position. Now we'll go to the second part is Joel. Now we want to take off and do what we call redirect to the football. He'll take off, plant the outside foot, and run flat down the line of scrimmage. Here's what we're going to make sure we tell our kids, that we're going to make sure we redirect, plant, drive the, plant the outside foot, and keep our bodies down and run flat down the line of scrimmage. We do not want to gain ground of what we call a fish hook. We want to say flat down the line of scrimmage. And you'll see certain examples of these as we go through the tape. Now we do a redirect draw to play the draw. What we want to do here is really take off read the draw set. If we get a draw set, we're going to turn to the inside. We want to make sure we turn inside. Club rip white back across and we have to sprint back across the line of scrimmage uh, to make sure we get a chance to play the ball. Uh, playing the draw is all reaction here, so you got to feel and see. Uh, get a key from the offensive tackle until there's a draw set. Wipe over top and sprint back to the line of scrimmage. Uh, it's important that they, they tell your players it's not to get to the line of scrimmage. You got to go past the line of scrimmage and have a chance to play to the ball. Now we're going to play redirect versus pass. And these three drills are doing, done in a combination that the old kids will never know what we're going to do. As part of our teaching progression, we'll break it down. The action when we start running is all reacting. We'll just continue to go through the drills. Uh, I shoot drills. We do the shoots uh, basically to teach the same thing. Now I want to emphasize our players stand as low as possible out of the shoot and accelerate and redirect it to the ball here. Again, we're going to make sure we plant on the outside foot and then redirect to the ball. <clears throat> Now we're going to work on our slant step. Again, three, uh, three important things I think is important in working on your slant steps. Make sure, again, you're in a comfortable stance. Uh, second of all, make sure you've got good hip uh, flexibility in the sense that your hips is a little higher than your hat. And the third and most important thing, we want to redirect. We want to slant, but we really want to make sure we take a flat step. Uh, some guys like to slant and take a 45 step. Uh, personally, I think taking a flat step gives you a better chance uh, to redirect and play back to the ball. Taking a 45 step, you may not have a chance to redirect if the play is going the opposite way. So we take a flat step, we redirect, uh, we dip, rip our shoulders, and then of course redirect towards the ball. And that's a pretty good job in the steps. Again, you see a slanted opposite side. Notice the redirection to the ball. Part two now, the part two of this drill is our bag drill. So our bag drill is essential in what we're doing trying to develop defense alignments. What we want to use our bag drills for is to work on our feet, 
hips, and acceleration. The idea here is to make sure every single drill that you do, you see happen in this tape, that makes sure every single player finish full speed through the drills. This is what we start teaching development. We think is important in trying to teach our players how to play hard, how to practice hard, and how to do drills hard. Because this is a skill that we think they got to have to be a great defensive line player. So I hope in the bag drills you get a sense of what we're doing, how fast we're running through the bag drills. But the most important thing we're looking for, the ability to lift our knees and have great flexibility. First drill, I can make sure everybody does the first drill, what we certainly call high knees. We want to get in a three-point stance, take off, drive our knees up in the air, and of course, accelerate off the last bag, at least five yards off the bag. Our next drill is a double-time knee drill. Emphasis here is make sure we drive the knees up in the air, and of course, accelerate off the back. Lateral over the bag drill, we just turn lateral, keeping our shoulders square. Trying to keep our toes point, pointed to the coach. And again, and when you come off the bag, we accelerate to finish the drill. Around the bag drill, just basically to develop some quickness, backpedaling, and some agility. Again, we want to make sure we drive forward, keeping our hips down, sinking our hips, and finish the drill with acceleration forward. Lateral the bags in a shoot is a real tough drill to do because now we're going to put you in a shoot, uh, which is going to help you stay knee bent, get great knee bend in your knees. Uh, also have the ability to keep their heads up as they go lateral the bag. That's a pretty good job by a guy 300 some pounds going underneath the shoot. Now he has advantage because he's on about six feet tall, but we do have guys six five going over the shoot. Stagger quick lower step drill. This is a great drill, I think. It's a great drill to develop quickness. I also help your kids really get their knees up in the air. It's a very fast pace drill. It's one of the drills we've been doing, working on in the spring to make our players better athlete. The key in a defensive line play is to make sure our players have a chance to be a good athlete. And so my job as a coach is to help to develop those skills. And I think the series of these bag drills will show you what we're working on. That's a pretty good job of getting his feet over the back. The key here is to make sure that he get his feet over the bags. And, of course, we go to lateral. Step lateral, knee over the bag, knee over the bags, and, of course, sprint off the back. Uh, you see the drill coming out of the way. Again, here is a slide shuffle. Slide shuffle, and then certainly high knees over the bag and sprint to the cone. And we do some pursuit drills to make sure our kids understand the importance of pursuing to the ball. This is called a high knee pursuit of the bag all around the cone to a direction to the middle and then sprint and finish. It's just the way just kind of play football. <clears throat> the same thing. The important thing here is to make sure you keep your feet running around the cone. That's a pretty good job there. Same drill again, high knee of the bag. Again, and to make sure our feet are continuing running. Our next drill is a lower up redirect drill. Uh, now we stay in it, st now we start in what we call the three-point stance. Uh, land three-point stance. Actually, we land flat on our stomach, and we're from this position, we're going to go lower over the back, up as fast as we can. Lower back. We want to make sure we go over the back, and then in and around, as you can see, and then sprint to your coach, plant, redirect to the ball. It's just again another way to develop delicate quickness in our defensive line play. High knees lower pursuit drill. Again, high knee of the bag, over the bag, lateral back. It's a pretty good job, good knee action. Then drive to the cone, plant and drive. Again, always finish the drill full speed. And this is high knee of the bag, same drill, just different variation of this same drill. Here, plant and drive. Lower hit up and drill, drill. Stepping over cone uh, bags to make sure, the key here is to make sure it doesn't cross his feet. Uh, putting your chest down on the ground to get up and trying to develop some quickness. The same drill again. The key is going over the bag, pop up the ground as fast as you can. Over again, try to de de develop some lateral quickness and foot speed in our defensive line. Hit lever up, bag drill. Again, you're going in and around. Again, just try to develop some quickness. And always finish drill to redirect and run into the ball. Low block shuffle drill. We do this drill to really just to work on 
a low block. Of course, at that level, we get cut block a lot of defensive linemen. So we got to have the ability to really work on and getting our outside foot back, pushing off the back, shuffling our feet, uh, and then going, going to the next back. And this is the way we can teach our low block uh, sequence. You can notice he's pushing off each bag, shuffling, keeping his head up, getting his outside foot back. We call push guild and of course accelerate up field to finish the drill. Same thing, we like keep our hands on the back if possible. That way we keep our knees bent if we keep our hands on the back. So we're going to slide our hands down the side of the bag and then accelerate. And that's a pretty good job. You see the same drill again? Base is sliding. Keep the hands down on the bags. That makes sure you're low. Keep your head up, outside foot back, head looking towards the opponent. That's a pretty good job there. Same drill. Notice his outside foot is back to protect him for the cut block. And then accelerate to the finish. Lateral low block drill. And all we basically do now is incorporate a big ball. And here we're going to accelerate, go lateral the bag, and a small ball. The key here is to make sure you get his outside foot back, keep his hand on the side, top of the ball, and pose a roll his hand over top of the ball. Okay, again, we're going to shuff, push back. Now we're going to lower step down heel, place your outside foot back. That's a pretty good job getting his outside foot, south foot back, outside foot back, and finishing the drill. Combination drill is high knees, lateral roll of the bags, sprint to a cone, carry ochre, flip your hips, back pedal, and finish the drill. This is a great drill, I think, to develop defensive line. Uh, we call this a four-corner drill. It's just a combination of seeing everything about an athlete. High knees on the back, sprint to the cone, lateral step, keep your shoulders square, to the cone downhill again. He's got to flip his hips inside, lateral step, and finish the drill. This is a great drill to develop defensive line play. Great high knees, go to the cone, drive straight, get his hips turned, go lateral to the back, drop down the cone again, high knees over the back, and down, and finish. It's a pretty good drill to develop defensive line play. Another part of our power, uh, power push hip drill. Uh, what we want to do here, men, what we want to do here is to make sure that we push, accelerate. I'm looking for a shock here. I'm not looking for a fast drill. Keeping your head up, keeping your inside foot back, outside foot back, and punch and accelerate off the back. I'm just looking for shock and power. Push, outside foot out, back, uh, elbows in, don't wind up. You can notice him be punching from his, from his chest. I'm posing and winding up. That's a pretty good job. I like to see him keep his outside foot back a little more as he work through the drill. Then we go to the third part of our drill sequence is our cone drills. We do a cone drill just to develop our feet speed. You can do these drills during the winter workouts or, or during your spring workout. But these are things you want to do. This is kind of step and go. Always finish the drill with a sprint off the cones. Uh, jump over cone drill, self-explanatory. We just kind of pop, bounce both back and forth as quick as we can, keep it in rhythm and then accelerate off the cone. High knee cone drill, exact same thing. Now actually we're going to sprint to the cone. No knee, just make sure he gets in control of his body and then we'll sprint off the cone. Sprint around the cone drill, exact same thing. We'll start in what we call three-point stance. Accelerate to the cone, in and around, in and around, and accelerate. The full cone, 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 cone drill is a drill that we're using now just to work on different uh, agilities and then quickness of our defensive line player. Uh, what we're going to start in three-point stance, he'll accelerate to the full first cone, sprinting. He'll go karaoke, back pedal to the next cone. Then he'll sprint to the next set of cones, slide, back pedal, turn, and sprint. Uh, you can do a, a combination of a lot of things in this cone drill. He goes to a karaoke, back pedal straight back, press and push, sprint to the next cone, go to a slide, keep your elbows in, back pedal and turn and run. We'll be as tight as possible off that last cone and then sprint to your start point. Pick up cone drill is a great drill to use just to work on uh, balance and knee bend. We want to pick the cone up with two hands. Set it down with two hands. That will get our heads up. Exact same thing again. Place the cone down. Jump on the back four times and repeat the drill. Again, we want to make sure we have, the ball, have two hands on the cone and our knees bent. And when you finish, sprint forward. Seat roll drill, the exact same thing. We're just going to start in a uh, four-point stance. Uh, he'll seat roll on the coach's command. Up, touch a cone, back pedal out. Get in position again, seat roll again. Seat roll, touch the cone, back pedal out. Again, always finish the drill with a sprint. A lateral pursuit hustle drill. We start in the middle of run to the cone. 
Sprint starts back in the middle, move his leg, go to the sideline, come back towards the middle again, move his feet, back pedal, run forward, and then turn and run to the cone. This is the great drill of you just to work on pursuit and teach them how to run to the football. Here's our lateral drills and things we do again uh, with our speed coach and try to develop uh, defensive line. The base is high knees chop, driving league knows how he's driving his arms, his arm is in sync with his knees. Double chop, same thing. Our end step now working on quick and notice the arm quickness. And then of course finish the drill with a sprint. A cross step drill, again just trying to develop some hip speed. Again, this is a great drill just working, teaching our slant movements. Okay, so we do these kind of drills develop. And you can just put these in the ground anywhere coaches to work these drills. Now this is probably one of the most important things we'll end up getting into or talking about a position blocking panel for techniques. We'll start at one technique nose guards, work to a three technique tackle, a uh, five technique end, and a six technique, uh, six technique defensive end. And what we're going to do is just basic block. Keep in mind here, we don't have pads on, so the blocks won't be perfect when you see it, but it'll give you an indication of what we're doing to fit blocks. So we'll go through our blocking progression, how we we'll attack blocks, and how we play off blocks in a sequence of drills. The first technique, of course, is the reach technique for our nose guard. The most important thing playing a reach technique is to make sure that we're stepping with the inside foot. That's the most important thing on the line of nose. Step the inside foot, attack the V of the neck of the center. That's one of the first things we do. We call it having a train wreck. So we're going to attack the V of the neck of the center, make sure I step my inside foot, press, lock out, push, pull the shoulders, and maintain integrity in the A gap. I should not get reached because if I step my inside foot, I'm going to have leverage in the hole right in the beginning. So you get a chance to see a couple of shots of a one technique plan a reach block. Make sure you don't cross your feet. Now one technique plan what we call a drive block, which is base base block. Again, he's a one technique, press and lock out, maintain or take it in the hole. Scoop block technique, what we're looking to do here, guys, is to make sure Make sure in our scoop technique, we want to make sure now that we press the center. We want to try to keep the center on the line of scrimmage as long as we can. So I'm going to press lock out, delay his, de delay his entrance to the linebacker, and try not to get scooped by the backside guard. If I can do that and keep the linebacker free, he got a chance to have a pretty good play. As you see, he did a good job keeping the center on the line of scrimmage. Again, the key is always step with your inside foot. Now, a scoop block away, the exact same thing, just keeping leverage on the inside. A technique versus a pull read. The first one we fit, cross face, come back, cross the center. Technique versus a double back block. That will try to play it from the back door if he can get beat to center. Back cross block, now he cannot get back through the center. Now he'll play back through the center, a cross face, to follow the pulling guard. Double team, there's so many philosophies on how to stop a double team. And what we really want to do, we want to create separation. That's the most important thing we want to do here. We want to always attack the one technique. I'll attack the center here, the man closest to my shoulder. He's the most important. So I want to try to attack him, attack the V of his neck, create a train wreck first, the most important thing. Get pressed, get locked out, and try to gain separation. Now, as I feel the double team come on me, I'm going to turn my hips into the hole, grab the center as hard as I can, and allow him not to drive me down the line of scrimmage. If I can't hold the A-gap integrity, then I'm going to go down to the ground, pull him down to the ground, make an Apollo. The thing I don't want to do is attack high. I do not want to lose ground and get blocked into the linebacker play. I want to make sure I can hold the integrity of the A-gap on the double team, as you see here. Press, turn his hips. Now let's go to the three technique. This is what we call three technique. It's our tackle. He's going to see a series of blocking patterns. Also, the first one is your reach block. And basically going to do the basic same thing as our one technique. Again, he's going to be in a, be in a, in a good inside foot back, step on his inside foot, pressing and locking out, hip pu push-pull technique, pushing him upfield. On the zone block, that means he's reaching away or reaching to me. He's got to really press and lock and press now. He's got to really press that guard who's trying to zone up onto the linebacker. We're going to press him out and keeping the back side guard from scooping us. Scoop block again, exact same thing, now just pressing and keeping them off. Technique versus trap. 
We were gonna squeeze the trap, we're gonna squeeze the guy who's going down. So the guard who's pulling or going across my face or inside of me, I'm first thing I wanna do is squeeze him. And once I squeeze him going down, I'm looking for the pulling guard. When I see the pulling guard coming, I'm gonna be inside out. I'm gonna train wreck him with what we call wrong arm. We're gonna get on the inside of the trapper. We wanna trap the trapper with our inside arm, with our outside arm going through. Three technique G block. That's when the guard's pulling. We can play this two ways. First, we're going to try to beat it if we can by getting back door, especially if his head's too far to the tackle, don't make the down block. If he steps flat, then I'm going to push, push, lock out, press, cross face, and get to the opposite side of the tackle. First, the pull technique. Guard pulls, I'm going to play back to the center.